Chattanooga Vectrogenesis, the ultrasound settings. This is the ultrasound screen on the Vectrogenesis. Keep your head warmer off because you don't want to injure your applicator head by having it be on. The head warmer actually turns it on to maybe a 0.5 watt per centimeter square and it gets warm, which will actually degrade the crystal of the ultrasound head faster. This is an expensive item to have to replace. The next button over here is frequency. Frequency will help us figure out how much depth we want to go into the tissue. One megahertz, deep tissue. Toggle the button, 3.3 megahertz, superficial tissue. The duty cycle is how much the ultrasound head is vibrating. If it's vibrating at 100%, it's essentially like causing a warmth by being on 100% of the time. The duty cycle that we'll use for making heat happen will be 100% also known as continuous ultrasound. As you toggle through here, there will be four choices. The 10% duty cycle we don't tend to use. The 20% duty cycle is the one we'll use for pulsed ultrasound. The next one will be 50% and then it goes back to 100. Let's go to the 20%. 20% 20 duty cycle is like if I rub my hand every five seconds, I wouldn't get heat, but I'd still get the vibration of the sound waves effect. So 20% means that it's on one fifth of the time. This is the one we would use for when we wanna help heal the tissues through increasing fibroblastic activity. Remember, people do not feel 20% duty cycle. So as you turn up the intensity, there will be no patient feedback generally. Let's go back to 100% here. I want to show what happens when you change frequency and how you get a different limit in intensities. So first, my ultrasound head is plugged in, but you will notice what you don't see it down here, I'm turning up the intensity you can see the dial going up. The green light didn't go on, which means there's no therapy. So until you hit start, there will be no treatment. Here we go. Here is zero intensity. I'm going to turn it all the way up to as high as it will go. And the maximum it lets you go to is 2.4 watts per centimeter squared. It's recommended that when you use 100% duty cycle causing heat and you're underwater, you don't go any higher than 2.5 watts per centimeter squared. This machine was even more careful and limited it to 2.4. If, however, you were using the heating continuous 100% duty cycle ultrasound and you were on the skin, then we would not want you to go above 2.0 watt per centimeter squared. So under the water where the ultrasound head will be next to but not touching, we can go all the way up to 2.5, but don't go above two when you're on the skin. If I were to switch the frequency up here to a superficial tissue of 3.3 megahertz, Watch how high the ultrasound intensity will let me go. It will not go above 1.8 total watts per centimeter squared. If you set the frequency to 3.3 and continuous, because you were thinking it was a more superficial tissue, and the patient doesn't feel heat at 1.8, you may need to turn it all the way down and switch your frequency back to one and ask them, tell me when you feel the heat. Beginning to feel the heat and you have to talk to them. 
and they'll tell you, okay, I'm beginning to feel the heat now. How about now? Uh, that's good, good, that's not too much. So you might have to go all the way up to your max. Now watch what happens when we do 20% duty cycle. Let's see how high the intensity can go at one megahertz. I'm just gonna turn the dial up, up, up. And our recommendation is that you go to 2.5 and no higher when you're doing pulsed ultrasound, 20% duty cycle, on, on the skin. So the applicator is on the skin. But when we get underwater again, we're gonna be separated by you know a quarter inch or so. Let's see how high the intensity goes on this machine, and it goes to exactly where we want, which is 2.9 watts per centimeter squared. The maximum we recommend is don't go above three. Remember, people do not feel pulsed. So you gotta work within these numbers. One last mention, pulsed ultrasound, does have a little bit of a thermal effect. So if you're worried about any swelling, you might not want to go above the one mark because again, they can't feel it. If you're worried about the thermal effect increasing swelling, then perhaps you might want to limit your intensity. Most studies though, that have been done on the effectivity of pulsed ultrasound were done at 2.5. One last thing. Let's look at frequency and how it affects the ultrasound intensity for pulsed ultrasound. Frequency, setting it to 3.3. How high will it let me go now? And look at that, will not go above 2.2. Remember, we were saying that you could go to 2.5 when you're on the skin with pulsed, but now it won't even let me. So that's it, and when you finally do hit start, I'm gonna turn off my intensity so I don't break my ultrasound head. So here's my head, it's in the air, I don't wanna break it. When you do finally turn on and hit the start button, so I'll hit the start button, you'll see that the timer will begin. Now if I put my hand, this ultrasound head on my hand, and I turn it up, the green light will show up. That's it.